Warm regards. Let us see the explanation of the poem If by Rudyard Kipling. A short note on the poet. Kipling, born in India, is an English journalist, short story writer, poet and novelist. His famous fiction is The Jungle Book. It was picturized. He received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1907. Now into the poem. This poem is a form of paternal advice, that is, the father's advice to the son. Rudyard Kipling advises his son, John. The text now. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. In these lines, the poet advises his son to be calm and not lose his temperament during tough days of life. Losing his temper does not solve problems, but rather intensifies it and he cannot come to solve the problem or a solution for the problem. So, he advises him to remain calm even when the others blame him. The next two lines now. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. In these lines, the poet wants his son to have trust and faith on himself when the others doubt him. When the others doubt him, however, he gains little space of thought and ensures himself he does nothing wrong. The next line, if you can wait and not be tired of waiting or be lied, don't deal with lies. The poet advises his son to work hard and wait patiently to receive positive results. The poet wants his son to remain calm, truthful and not indulge himself in lies. He wants him to be honest. The next two lines are being hated, don't give way to hating and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. His next advice is to love and respect others, their thoughts, the people. He mustn't show hatred to others even if the others show their hatred towards him. The poet wants his son not to be proud and show off his good qualities for others may feel uncomfortable and tend to avoid his companionship. This is the next stanza of the poem. If you can dream and not make dream your masters, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim. The poet advises his son to dream and reach great heights in life, but not make dream his masters, which means he must keep reality in mind. He wants his son to think over a matter and him, he must be able to stick on to the main focus and not be misled from his target. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. In these two lines, the poet personifies triumph and disaster you can notice that he has capitalized both the words triumph and disaster. Triumph means victory, disaster means failure and the word imposter means a person who cheats or pretends. The poet advises his son to accept joy and sorrow, that is, the good times and bad times with similar treatment. If you can bear to hear the truth you have spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. Very often, people misinterpret or deliberately distort the words one speak. The poet advises his son to be tolerant and ensure the truth he spoke. The next last two lines. Oh, watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. 
Life is full of success and failures. The poet advises his son not to break down when he faces failures. Rather, he must be patient and build over all again. The third stanza of the poem. The text. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginning and never breathe a word about your loss. The explanation of these four lines. The poet talks about the capability of taking big risks to achieve much greater success. The poet wants his son to risk all his success to achieve greater success. Even if he fails, he mustn't utter a word about his loss but rebuild it again from the beginning. The next four lines. If you can force your heart and nerves and sinews to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. The explanation now. The poet emphasizes on the mental strength and willpower of his son. The poet wants his son to use his heart, nerves and sinews, that is his physical strength to the utmost. When he loses his strength due to old age or illness, he doesn't want him to give up but compels him to hold on as long as possible. This is the fourth stanza and the final stanza of the poem. If you can talk with crowd and keep your virtues, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. In these lines, the poet wants his son to stay in touch with people from every class of the society and at the same time, he must not lose his virtue and moral values. Again, he should be able to walk with king without going beyond the reach of common people. The next two lines. If neither force nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count on you but none too much. The poet advises his son to develop a healthy relationship with everybody around and not allow anyone to harm him. He must be cautious. The next two lines, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance return. The poet reminds his son, the time is precious. A minute has 60 seconds. He doesn't want him to waste time, but rather use it fruitfully. And now the last two lines of the poetry. Yours is the earth and everything that has in it. And which is more, you will be a man, my son. Finally, the poet says, if his son fulfills the above conditions, he can win the earth and everything in it. He would be a man, he reminds him. He shows his son the right way to be a future leader. Thank you.